Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Asteroid Defense Series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. Now, this was the asteroid that we were supposed to be worried about because it was coming into the Kerbin system and we couldn't see its periapsis. However, it, it looks like it's now going to just give us a miss entirely. Uh, I don't know how this happened. Um, I don't know why it's not showing any intercept. We have other asteroids with... Uh, with encounters with Kerbin, so that it's not uh, it's not a systematic thing. Uh, let's see here, yes. But the one that was coming most immediately is now projected not to be coming in at all. Do we trust this little res uh, little result? I don't know. I don't know whether to trust it or not. But I think it's better to err on the side of caution. Now we also have an untracked class D. I think this is the one that wasn't going to hit. Let's just check that it isn't still. Okay. Because uh, I remember I stopped tracking one last time. Uh, this is... Okay. So this one this one has never been tracked. But I don't know where it's... Let's see. Okay, that one is going to hit. Okay. So yeah, I'm just checking these out because I want to know if we... Oh, well, this one is pretty soon, isn't it? Okay. I, I wanted to find one that was uh, reasonably soon. Well, not that one, but we're tracking a lot of asteroids nowadays. Uh, oh, okay, 11 days. All right. Oh, this one's quick. Eight days. Class E in 21 days. Track. Okay, that's far out. Okay, so... God, how can I uh, sort these out? Really, I need to be able to sort them out based on when they're coming in, but I guess that's not a thing yet. So, I think HSJ... Well, that'll be easy for me to remember. HSJ227. Okay. Will be the... Well, that's 11 days. No, there was an 8-day one. Well, are they sorted already? Anyway, no. Hold on. So I'm OLX is not soon. Okay, this one. This one. IHY. So HSJ... 227 and IHY. Oh, God. Okay, well, we'll okay, can we sort this at all? Hmm. Okay, eight days, that one. So that's the one we're going to have to be worried about most uh, immediately, though I'll keep an eye on this one just in case it decides to come in after all. And when I say worried, though, uh, with uh, IHY, well, yeah, it doesn't have a periapsis, so that might mean it's missing entirely, or it might mean it's crashing right into us. I don't know yet. Uh, for HSJ, it has a Kerbin periapsis, so it's not going to crash into us, and it's pretty far out, so probably we're not even going to be able to manipulate it at all. Alright, that's the situation, but let's still get an asteroid defense mission up into orbit, uh, so that we're prepared just in case... Just in case some surprise occurs, and for instance, this guy decides to dip in after all. What's... Oh, this is another, uh... Within Kerbin's orbit class of asteroid. Let's, let's see about this. Okay, so it's coming in as well. Alright, so let's go to VAB and take a look at that, uh... That rocket I put together last time. It's, it's a shame that we don't have the little nifty flat probe parts yet, otherwise we could do this unmanned actually. But I guess it'll be more fun with a Kerbal anyway. Maybe the Kerbal will be able to do an EVA on it and get some science out of it somehow. Um, yeah, I mean this looks all fully featured. Oh, I wanted to actually group the solar panels. So let's do that. Toggle panels. Anything else I should... Uh... I guess I can action group the claw itself. So, toggle arming. And how about release grapple on three? Okay, I think that's... everything is spoken for now. I guess we need to recolor a bit. 
Oh no, it is all red, right. I wanted red to be the color for all the asteroid missions, though technically I guess I should also reserve it for Duna. Well, not really, Duna. I don't want it to clash with Duna's own color, so. Okay, um, but here on this one I forgot to t take off the barometers. Let's, don't need those. I don't know if we can get thermometer readings close to an asteroid. Totally don't know about that. Anyway, I think this will be the rocket that we send up. I think this will be quite good enough, so let's save. Who shall we put in station around Kerbin? Uh, Lubas Kerbin looks like he's primed and ready to go. Look at all that. All that courage and stupidity. Yes, yes, he's the one. Alright, out to launch pad. Now, of course, in doing this, I'm assuming that the... The asteroid is not going to come in at a weird inclination. I mean, you know, plus or minus 10 degrees is fine. Uh, we can adjust for that. I mean, we do uh, similar adjustments for Minmus, for instance. But but more than uh, 10 degrees, and that's going to be a bit of an issue. And, of course, if it's going backwards, that's if it's going retrograde, then, then we're in serious trouble. We could try to intercept it in interplanetary space, but that takes a lot more energy. I mean, really, I guess that's what the the new parts are for, the the SLS style parts. Um, that I, I don't know if I can do that just on. Well, I guess I should try maybe with the skippers. But let's put one mission into orbit as a just in case mission, and then later on maybe send another mission out to try and intercept an interplanetary You know, I would like to do that with a probe part. I don't want to risk a Kerbal, risk stranding a Kerbal in interplanetary space if I can't get an intercept with uh, the asteroid. So once we unlock the appropriate probe parts, then we'll try the interplanetary mission. So there's supposed to be a SpaceX launch today. Uh, they've been delaying it for a while. At first it was delayed for a technical issue and then it was delayed because of some radar tracking station issue. So it's been put off for like two months now. So I hope they get it off uh, alright this time. It's uh, carrying food and other supplies to the space station including the... they've got a robot on the space station and they are giving it legs. Uh, they're bringing up some uh, a, a mini garden with uh, red cabbage. Uh, what else? They got a bunch of CubeSats. If you uh, a little cube sat cubic satellites, um, cheap, uh, very efficient little things that you can just knock out of the spacecraft, and uh, and they'll be orbiting for a while, uh, but they'll eventually have a decaying orbit. So that's happening with uh, SpaceX. Though of course the thing that uh, I'm most interested in is their uh, SpaceX's attempt to retrieve the first stage. They're not going to try and have it land on the pad like they eventually want to. Okay, I'm not uh, getting this right here. Anyway, but uh, they're going to uh, have it try and make a soft landing in the ocean uh, because uh, obviously they don't want to try it on land just yet because if something goes wrong then that could threaten populations. But uh, if, you know, as long as you can do it over an ocean, then it's a lot safer. But we'll be seeing whether they can actually retrieve that first stage, the first uh, reusable first stage. Lots of rockets have, uh, th it, during the planning stages, a lot of people have tried to make uh, first stages retrievable. Even the Saturn V, they tried to make retrievable. But at every, every instance, there was the barrier that, oh god, what am I doing? Uh, it was always a matter of uh, cost. Hmm. I need to figure out the launch uh, because of. Uh, maybe I should just dump some fuel from this stage because uh, it's just not properly weighted. Otherwise, I need to figure out uh, appropriate launch profile for this particular rocket because this is well, obviously not the right launch profile. Oh well, let's put on the lights. Oh, fewer lights than I thought I had. Oh yeah, because the other one was a lander, it had them facing down, right. 
Okay. Anyway, uh, so yeah, it, all attempts to retrieve the first stages, which is the important one because that's usually the one with the expensive rockets on it. Uh, nine of them in the case of the SpaceX um, Falcon 9. And yeah, uh, it's always a matter of cost. They decide to not go with it. And of course, complexity, right? It's a low probability thing. But uh, unless you can get it to be a high probability thing. Okay, our orbit must be very interesting now. Yeah, okay, gonna bring that up. Let's shut that off. Okay, so our orbit should decay a little bit because we're still in the atmosphere. A high orbit is fine. After all, uh, the matching the incoming asteroid has got to be interesting. The first thing we're going to need to do is match its inclination, and it's better not to be so close to Kerbin when you do that. Trying to use the Oberf effect while intercepting an asteroid is not uh, not not the best idea, actually, because of the need to match its speed, uh, its uh, trajectory. Now let me create another one. I think I accidentally used the middle mouse wheel on one of the nodes, you see, when I zoomed in. Okay, well, I'm going to keep it at 150 by 150, I think. Or thereabouts. So after this, we'll uh, turn back to Minmus with our poor Kerbal who is just sitting there waiting to be returned to Kerbin. And I think uh, the eight days before the next asteroid comes in should be enough time. Though we'll keep an eye on the other asteroids to make sure none of them is trying to mess with us. Okay, that's that. And actually... I also would like to put a controller on this portion so I can deorbit it. It really doesn't need to be in orbit with everything else. Um, 149 by 152 kilometer orbit. And I guess I'll have it, since it's here, I guess I'll have it tagged along so that we have the extra fuel. I was considering just dumping it at this point. But uh, since it's here, it's here, I guess. So, yep, yeah, alright. So with that, no, that's the moon. Let's take a look at, uh, at our Kerbal on Minmus. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do for my uh, Asteroid Defense Kerbal, and that's to get his solar panels open. But uh, I'll do that uh, in a little bit. Uh, in a pinch, he can always go out and open up the solar panels anyway. So, All right, uh, still no sign of uh, asteroids coming in, per se. Hmm. All very worrying. Alright, Mitgun, I think we have to bring you home. You are carrying quite a lot of science. Yep. Alright, do we know what we're doing? I guess so. Alright, so let's go uh, 90 degrees and that should be alright. Darn, I hate when the that's not open. Okay, that's good enough. And let's complete it like that. That should be fine. Now, we do want to do one more GUI experiment, I think. Observe so mystery goo. Goo feels right at home in space near Minmus. Indeed. Keep that data. And I don't think there's anything else for us to do, is there? Uh, do we need to... We've got both the thermometer readings, I think.
Yeah. Okay, let me extend some solar panels just in case. So I'll just extend two of them. Okay, maybe I'll just extend four of them. Okay. Okay, now let's burn for home. See how long this takes. Well, there's that asteroid. Hmm. Still keeping an eye on it. Well, we really don't need that this time. Two days. Okay, well, that should be before even the other one was supposed to get back. I didn't think it'd be this quick. Okay. Still trying to get used to using the mouse wheel to do the fine adjustments. Uh, unfortunately, there seems to be a big gap in the adjustment level right where I need some sort of fine tuning. Uh, either it goes in hundreds or it goes in like tens of thousands sometimes. Okay. When I need thousands. But uh, yeah, okay, I'm getting it. Oh, no, I got lost it. <laughs> I think, yeah, I still have a lot of practice to do when it comes to fine-tuning things. Okay, alright, that's good enough for me. Actually, maybe that's not. We're coming back from Minmus. It's a little bit strenuous. It's going to be tough. Alright, so we've got our return maneuver plotted. It's in 28 minutes. Oh, we lost electric charge. Ah, we gained electric charge back. That's because we're not carrying the batteries we had on the lower stages. Okay, I think this is a good enough time to start out. Mm, I don't know how long this will take to accelerate. Oh, close enough. Okay, that should do. Very well. Now, any other celestial bodies wanting to get into the Kerbin system? Let's find out. Uh, see you in uh, Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Okay. So far, so good. We are departing Minmus. There it goes, receding into the background. And Kerbin is there. Let's actually point towards Kerbin, perhaps? If we can. Oh, yes. We... No, that's away from, but okay. In line with Kerbin somehow. Alright. Let's jump back out. See our course and if anything is coming in. Well, looks like we're still in the clear here. Maybe we should try to intercept this one since it's sort of passing by anyway. 
will take a little bit more juice though. Oh wait, uh, electric charge diminishment again. Uh, oh, uh, Kerbin is eclipsing the sun. Okay, well let's turn our lights off then. Should be that we're gonna come in on the bright side, so that's not a problem. We do have little lights, but that's not uh, that's not the issue. Uh, the reason I want to make sure we're on the bright side is so that obviously my viewers can actually see the craft properly instead of uh, even the lit version of the craft. But in this case, the lights are facing well. Which way are they facing? They're facing down because this is the lander, so uh, it was more important to uh, have it facing down so I could see the land. So, yeah. Um, Alright, we're going to be hitting the atmosphere. Let's retract these panels. We have to bring everything down because we've got the goo containers on this stage here. Let me quickly check to see what kind of mass we have. 2.84 tons. That's pretty heavy. We could do with some uh, burning of fuel. But we do have this uh, top parachute, which is, you know, pretty sturdy stuff. In fact, I think this top parachute is meant to carry the big three Kerbal pod, so... And that's like four tons. In that case, I don't think we're we're too bad off here. All right, here we go. Okay, I don't know which biome this is. I don't think we gotta hit anything new. We haven't done all the biomes on Kerbin yet, after all. So that's that's always a possibility that we'll hit one that we haven't done before. But we don't. Yeah, I, I mean this is Lando. We've got. Uh, I don't know if I can get him to hop back in though. The the little EVA packs don't really have that much juice. What we really don't want to do is, I, I don't know about these little slopes near the water's edge. I don't fancy landing on those. Anyway, uh, this is uh, going to be a lander for a while too. I mean, this could probably land on numerous locations, right? Uh, I think Ike could definitely do with one of these. Val, definitely Gilly. This this could work as a Gilly lander. So we have many possibilities ahead for this little guy. So knowing that it works will be helpful. I think we can pop the shoots now. SAS off. So I'm going to resist uh, burning off the fuel because I want to see what the capacity of the parachutes are. Just in case we're returning from somewhere else, we might want to know how much we can overload this with. Um, parachutes? Oh, okay. I was worried for a sec there. Whew. Okay, five meters per second, definitely. No problems. Actually, uh, since we're coming down like this, I guess we can have our lander legs out. Why not? Okay, Midgun Kerman uh, arriving back to the surface of Kerbin. Let's see how much science he brought back. 414 science, not bad, not bad at all. Surface sample, EVA report, two mystery goo experiments, two temperature scans, and crew report and recovery of a vessel from the surface of Minmus. Excellent. Uh, I think we can go to the tech tree and see what we can do with all this. Though, actually, first I want to check on my asteroid defense guy and get those solar panels out. Well, actually, uh, we're, we're pretty good for electric charge despite it being two days. Did we have some panels that were... Oh, yes, I do. I have these, some of these uh, 
full the voltaic panels are always up there so they, they made sure that we were fully charged up excellent uh, but let's get the supplementary panels out just in case we don't want to be messing around with that all right and uh, the lights are still on and we're all nice and situated now one thing I wanted to do was see see whether with our new maneuver node system we could potentially plot for this let's say set us target so let's say we we were going to go for it we need to burn out in this direction let's say okay and so you can see the sort of uh, intercept point and where the target will be but that's very much uh, you'll notice it's very close to where we are right now in other words the gap between the two is pretty much the same and that's that's something that uh, will take a lot of fuel to overcome let's see uh, right now this will take a thousand fifty two that's only because I did a little bit of adjusting already um, one thing we can do is adjust this guy and I forget if this is quicker or sooner. Okay, this looks... Let, let me get the number. 211. Let's say we turn it this way. Ah, further. Okay. So we want to go in this direction, let's say. 93. Forty-three, sixteen. Now, of course, there's not gonna be a sphere of influence thing. It's not gonna tell you, yes, now you're now you're ready to go. Uh, you just get as close to it as possible, and then hope for the best. Um, we're not going to do this maneuver. I'm gonna keep it though, just in case. Just in case I have a bout of insanity. But this is the sort of thing we'll do with an uh, un uncurbled mission. What kind of inclination difference do we have? Okay, that's worse. Aha, okay, that's getting better. I want to get the ascending node here. Then, uh, then I can adjust the rest. No, not that way. Let's say we tweak it just a little bit like that. Ten. Aha, okay, now we're talking. 312 kilometers. And uh, sort of after we get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, and this is just one burn, right? So we're talking about just the, oh, I just messed it up probably because I used the, no, it's fine. Uh, so this is just the initial burn, uh, getting out of Kerbin's sphere of influence, and we already have a 312 kilometer range on it. And we could get there in a day, it looks like. Very impressive. I'll, I'll keep that in mind. I uh, will think about this and such things. But I really... Uh, even if we could get to the asteroid like this, I wouldn't be sure that we could get back or anything. And I don't know how hard it is to push an asteroid around. I imagine pretty hard. I don't think we have the rockets to do it on this particular thing. Um, maybe, maybe not. But because we're not sure, we have to be cautious. All right, uh, so let's go to the tech tree. 432 science isn't much when we're at this part of the tech tree. Um, landing. I, I like that blurb, actually. Uh, the one that says, our engineers are nothing if not optimistic. Landing, yes. Uh, we could buy anything. Oh, I guess we could go for these probe parts. That's not bad. I've been wanting those. Ion engines would be very helpful for pushing asteroids around. Now, 
It's more a matter of uh, keeping the thrust up for, uh, I mean, just sheer delta V, let's say. Let's just say um, sheer delta V. Clampatrons. And a nuke is somewhere over here, as you can see. I want to avoid getting these parts. Now, some people say that uh, they're overpowered, and that's not true compared to reality. They're underpowered compared to reality. Even if you scaled down the SLS to curb, a Kerbin scale, they are, uh, their stats are underpowered. The problem is uh, we don't have quite the same obstacles on Kerbin that we, uh, you know, Earth has, uh, even if you uh, readjust the gravity. So that's why the stuff that are that is suited for Earth is not really is overpowered for Kerbin. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit overpowered if we have it at the same place as the main sail. This is sort of weird. So I'm gonna hold off on that idea. The docking ports are important. So let's. Let's get the probe parts because I've been saying that I, I want to use probes to uh, get at these things and that'll be helpful. What's this one? Okay, these are the, the probe parts I really, really want, I guess you could say. Um, but that uh, getting that means that I can't afford the ion propulsion yet, which is one of the two really important propulsion systems. Okay, so... I guess we could just fill out things because we've got uh, 132 science and that's not enough to get any of these other ones. Uh, this is a, has a little probe core but I'm not going to use it. It's possible that we might want to make a single stage to orbit plane to do something. I can't imagine what. Uh, but the last last series, my last stock series, I didn't do any single stage to orbit space plane, and I think maybe maybe this time I should. So let's see now. Should I get this one? This seems to have more parts. Oh, it has this tail connector that'll let me use uh, create a certain type of stage that I've been wanting. So, all right, uh, let me research that one. All right, so we've uh, used up our science for this time. At least I don't think there's any other technology we could possibly open with it. So we brought Mick and Carbon back home. We see that we could intercept an asteroid if we wanted to. Uh, well, at least get within a few hundred kilometers of one, which is pretty good considering where we're at. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.